support, education about asexuality, all things asexual, and I share my asexual life journey in order to help you and yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that great big subscribe button right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon so you get notified of every time I go live right now, post a new video. So in today's episode, we're going to be discussing common and crazy myths about asexuality. If you've got any you want to discuss with me during this live stream, please feel free to leave them in live chat. If you don't know who I am, if you're new to this channel, I'm Sandra Bellamy, author of Awesome Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories book available on Amazon. So grab your copy right now. So yes, asexual myths. There are quite a number of asexual myths. So let's go through some of them. So yes, asexuality um, myth um, is, well, one of the biggest myths is that we are abstaining. So abstaining for religious reasons or abstaining for marriage is the two most common um, things that get said about asexuals. You know, like, oh, yeah, you're abstaining for religious reasons. Yeah, OK, like, I don't have sex before marriage either. Right. Asexuality is not about abstain abstaining. It's not about stopping having sex until you get married or for some religious reason. It's a genuine sexual orientation that is a lack of sexual attraction. So asexuality and the lack of sexual attraction means that we don't get the need, urge, or want for partner sexual intercourse. Of course, uh, asexuality is a spectrum, but if you're talking about pure asexuals, we don't have that desire, that need, that want. And so that's another thing um, that's a huge myth about asexuality. People think we're holding ourselves back and we're repressed. You know, you, you know, and I get asked by guys like, okay, so what do you do when you get the urge? It's like, I don't get the urge for sex. I don't get the urge for sex. I can kiss a guy for hours and I never get the urge for sex. So, you know, when someone says, oh, so what do you do to stop the urge? The answer is I don't have it in the first place. You know, this is a complete myth, right? I'm not holding myself back. I'm not repressed. It's not something I'm forcing myself not to do. If I wanted to have sex, I would, but I don't want it. And people still don't understand when I say I'm asexual, I lack sexual attraction, why I don't want sex. A lack of sexual attraction, like I just explained, means I don't get that need. I don't get that urge. I don't get that want. I don't have the desire in me. And then, of course, the other myth is it's unnatural because that's the majority of the population in the world thinks it's natural to have sex. There is nothing unnatural for certain people in the world to not want sex. Yes, it may be very natural for a lot of people to want sex, but it's not natural for everyone. It's not. And you have to understand that society has conditioned you to believe that that is normal to experience sexual attraction. It's the only normal, but it's not the only normal. Right. And obviously, the people that need you to believe that that's right and that everyone needs sex in a relationship are the people that are trying to sell sex toys, sexy lingerie, Viagra, sex in movies, pornography and all the other stuff that comes with sex. Because if a lot of the world believed, really genuinely believed, that sex is not necessary in life or relationships, just think of all the business, the big you know, players would lose. They'd lose a lot of money from all the stuff they sell for sex, you know. And, you know, sex a lot of the time can lead to a lot of problems, you know, divorce, cheating, unsatisfied and unfulfilled relationships because people judge sex by, you know, the amount that people judge love, I should say, by the amount of sex they are or are not having, not realising that love is completely separate to sex and you don't need sex to be in a loving, caring, committed relationship. Like, I had a guy on Facebook dating who liked me, right? He's not my usual type, but I thought I'd reply to him and I just told him that I don't think we'd be suitable because I'm asexual and sexual orientation. I lack sexual attraction. I hate sex. And, you know, um, you know, that's not why I'm after. So I don't think we should be suitable because I presume you're heterosexual and want sex. And he wrote back to me and said, I don't think a person like you should be on Facebook dating because in my opinion, you're just looking for a friend. And there are 
things. Uh, there are a- apps like Badu, I think he said, and another one that are oh and Bumble that are for BFF slash friend chats. And it's like I'm not looking for that. Like I have friends. Like I am on there on their Facebook dating this time to have like relationship dating. I like relationship, uh, friendship and chat, right? I'm looking obviously to get some video dates and find a suitable guy for me for a relationship in the end. But I am looking for friendship on there. But if I've if I've liked someone as in like or someone's liked me as more as in more than a friend, then obviously I'm going to be thinking about whether they're suitable for a relationship with me or not. Right. And so I'm not looking in terms of a relationship. I'm not looking for just a friendship. But if people think for one minute that having a fuck buddy and that fucking, excuse my language, is what makes a relationship, it's truly disturbing because the amount of fucking you're doing or not doing has got nothing to do with whether you can have a healthy, good relationship or not. In fact, it's the opposite. In fact, loving someone without sex, you get a deeper, more meaningful relationship. And, you know, and if people in the world are all they're judging a relationship on, it's by how much sex they are or are not having. This is why the world has got so many unhealthy relationships. Divorce rates are through the roof and why people are cheating. I keep getting guys in my inbox that are in relationships with other people that are trying to, like, hit on me. It's fucking, excuse my language, disgusting. I had a guy a short while ago in my inbox and he was like looking for a sexual relationship and he's already in a complicated relationship so I told him a piece of my mind quite frankly before I blocked him you know how I was disgusted how you know he's already got someone for a relationship so I said you should love the woman you're with instead of looking around for someone else you know and if not set her free so she can be with a better guy you know with a guy who who can care for her the way she needs I said, guys, like, you disgust me. They really do. I absolutely get disgusted. You know, this is why the world is so in disarray with relationships. This is why relationships break down, because people are so sex-obsessed. The amount of guys that are sex-obsessed, that are going around inboxing other people is disgusting. I get loads of them. And I am disgusted and repulsed, and I don't know why they have no shame. And how they have no conscience to realise what they're doing is wrong and hurting their person. You know, it's disgusting. And they're hurting themselves because at the end of the day, they're not going to have true love with the person they're with. They can't have that deep soulmate love because they want to cheat. You can't get that. You can't get that deep love if you want to cheat and you want to go after other people. Right? And if you're the type of guy that listening to this that does do that, you know, you're the one with the problem, not the woman you're with. It doesn't matter what woman you end up with. You will always end up with the same problem. Dissatisfied sex life, you know? Hiya. Nice to see you. Um, You know, you'll, you'll always end up with a dissatisfied sex life because you can't get satisfied with the person you're with. So you keep looking and looking for someone else to go to bed with, to sleep with, to get more sex with. Not realising you're the problem because you're not obviously create enough satisfaction in the relationship you've already got probably because you're actually rubbish at doing that you know and you're going around trying to get it from other people it's just disgusting right absolutely disgusting so you know but I think some of these guys in my inbox like clearly he said I'm looking for a sexual relationship I've already put in the post in the dating group I was in which is where he found me which he shouldn't even be in anyway if he's got a woman you know um because it's supposed to be for singles, divorced or separated. But, you know, he's still in a relationship status on his Facebook. He's still got a woman in his profile. So clearly he's in a relationship with her, you know. Um, And it's just disgusting. I'm disgusted. And I, they think, you know, one of the myths about asexuality, I guess, or myths about asexuals is they're just looking for a friend, like I said. And that is so annoying. I know there are asexuals who are just looking for a friend. But in terms of a relationship, I find it very insulting when they're like, you're just looking for a friend, as much to say as, you know, you've got to have sex. Otherwise, if you don't have sex in a relationship, you've just got a friendship. And I think that's so sad. I think that's really, really sad because the only person and people that should define a relationship are the two people in it. You know, not the people that are looking on a relationship, the people that are in the relationship. And you don't have to have sex to have love. Absolutely not. You don't have to have sex to be, have a romantic relationship if you choose. You don't have to have sex, you know, to to kiss someone. You don't have to have sex to hold their hand. You don't have to have sex to stroke their hair. You don't have to have, 
you know, and you don't have to be able to do all the other things such as kiss, cuddle, hold hands and then have sex. You know, you don't have to do that. And, you know, the world really needs retraining its whole brain as, you know, to, to know that things are separate. And so asexuals aren't repressed, you know, and we're not like to be used to have as a sideline to their main sexual relationship. I hate that. I know some asexuals are polyamorous. Right. But polyamorous relationships are set up in a very specific way. I'm not polyamorous myself, but I I have polyamorous people in my asexual dating groups and their relationships are set up in a very, very, you know, certain way. And it's, you know, they are definitely polyamorous in the way they set up, you know, and it takes a lot of guts to be able to do that and trust and all the rest of it. Right. But these are people that I was talking about, like guys are in my inbox just going around behind their woman's back and I get disgusted. I don't like guys like that. and it's waste my time. It wastes their time. I don't see the point in it. You know, I hate guys who waste my time. You know, my time is really precious. But the trouble is, you know, you don't know a guy until you've spent time with them. But, you know, I do get guys in my inbox just decide to come in there um, or find me in dating groups and they're not single, you know excuse me and so yeah so that's a big myth you know um that we just want a friend and it really annoys me you know because i have really good high quality friends i've got asexual friends and i would not swap them for all the world and i will always be friends with them and i'll always want to spend time with them where i get into a romantic relationship or i don't right so that's never going to change but i do not kiss my friends i don't cuddle my friends i don't hold their hands I know some asexuals do, but I do not do any of that. I'm very strict with my boundaries with my friends and they're strict with me, right? We don't need to hold hands if we're friends, you know? If I'm having a romantic relationship with a guy because I'm in a relationship with him, then, you know, I'll be kissing, cuddling and holding hands with him. I don't do that with my friends. And I so I get really annoyed when people are just saying you just want a friendship, right? If you are a romantic asexual that wants a romantic relationship, it's much more than a friendship. Right, because you're giving different space and time to that person. You're having different intimacies with that person. It doesn't mean to say you're having sex with that person, but you're having different intimacies. Obviously, a big myth about asexuals is that none of us ever have sex or ever have had sex. This simply isn't true. It's true for some asexuals, but it isn't true for every asexual. Um, I get a lot of guys in my inbox, and some of them are like, you know, they automatically assume I'm a virgin because I'm asexual. I'm not a virgin. I have had sex in the past. I've been in heterosexual relationships for the, a lot of my former life, if you like, before I found out I was asexual in 2014. And so, yeah, I'm not a virgin. And some guys get a real kick out of having a person who's a virgin and never had sex with anyone. They kind of like, I don't know, I, I kind of find it a bit perverse, you know. It's kind of like they want... a I, I, you know, I think it's good if you're a virgin who kept your virginity for yourself. Don't get me wrong. But these specific guys I'm talking about, they tend to seek out girls who are virgins. And I don't know if it's just because they want to spoil them. And as in they they want to be the first person to have sex with that, that person or if they fit, fit, treat them like some sort of object. That's kind of the vibe I get from those type of guys. that They look more uh, of the woman like a, a doll, like a, an object. Almost like, you know, that they're theirs and, you know, they're going to keep them because they haven't had sex with anyone else and they're worth keeping. And they value the amount, of, they value the person by the amount of sex they haven't had, but not in a healthy way, in a kind of perverse, weird way. Um, I don't know if you knew that. But yeah, um, and, so, you know, I've had, but sometimes it's not always good. Like one heterosexual ex I dated, I dated him. I wasn't in a relationship with him. He ended up being a real psycho. And he talked about his niece, you know, not being sweet and innocent, not having sex. And to me, he seemed like he was a bit perverted with his niece. And I didn't like that. So I'm very wary of people who, you know, it's it's good if someone appreciates your asexuality and that you've kept your virginity for yourself in a, in a nice, educational, healthy, matter of fact, appreciation way. But it, when it's like a guy specifically seeking out virgins on purpose, it's a bit weird. You know, um, so be very careful of those type of guys. Um, you know, and so yeah, and so one of the most craziest myths that I've ever had a guy say to me is that I'm in a trance. That has got to be one of the most craziest myths ever. And this happened with a taxi driver because yes, me being me 
And I'm very direct, honest and open. I tell the world, as many people as I can, that I'm asexual because I love to promote asexuality and tell people what it is. And I spoke to this guy in a taxi and he was like, oh, I was coming back from a club or somewhere and I was t talking to him. I might not have been a club, actually. I can't remember. But I was coming, you know, I was in the taxi and I was saying to him that, you know, asexuality and I was explaining what it is. And he's like, oh, you're in a trance. So I turned around to him and said, well, you must be in a trance if you're heterosexual then. And he didn't like that very much. He took a lot of offence to it. But it was affecting his driving and I was in the car. So I didn't want to like um, carry on talking about it because I wanted to keep myself safe. But he got really irate and fed up with the fact that I retaliated back, you know. Because you know, we as asexual could equally say that wanting sex is completely unnatural. You know, just as people say that wanting sex is natural we could easily say and equally say the wanting sex is not natural you know um it's unnatural because to asexuals a lot of the time to many asexuals not all wanting sex is not natural right so just because heterosexuals are the most population at the moment they're still the most um dominant sexuality doesn't mean to say they're right I can understand if some people want to have kids the natural way, then there's body parts for that if they want it, but they don't have to have it naturally. But I understand that some people may want that. Far, fair enough. But what? why else do they need sex? You know, I, I don't really get it. Um, you know, you don't need it. It's because people have pleasure from it. But, you know, you can get pleasure from sport. If you like sport, I don't like sport, but you can get pleasure from movies, you can get pleasure from photography, you can get pleasure through dancing, you can get pleasure through talking to friends, you can get pleasure through many, many other ways. You don't have to have sex, right? You know, there's thousands of ways to have pleasure, right? And so, you know, the, the, the way people talk about sex being natural, basically what it is, it's hormonal a lot of the time, you know? It's, it's the fact that you get oxytocin released, supposedly, when you have sex, the people who enjoy it. People who don't enjoy it are not going to get that release, are they? Because, you know, not in the same way, because it's going to be like, I really hate doing this. It's boring. I don't like it. It doesn't feel right. Um, You know, but like I said, some asexuals have had sex. So it's a myth that not every asexual has sex, Okay. So, uh, asexuals cannot enjoy sex, right? So, for a lot of asexuals, they don't enjoy sex. A lot of asexuals don't want sex. But there are a proportion of asexuals that do have sex. And they enjoy the physicality of it, the, the biological and physiological things that go on. Um, they, they enjoy it like a, a board game, their favourite board game, that type of thing. So physically, um, they're capable. Some are capable. I'm saying them, I would say more of a minority, uh, lots of asexuals. But I tend to feel that the majority of these people are on the more grey end of the asexual spectrum rather than the pure asexual end. So what's the difference? Like a pure asexual is someone who doesn't experience any sexual attraction whatsoever. They don't get the need, urge, or want for partner sexual intercourse at all. I don't get that need. A great asexual is someone who does experience sexual attraction, but only in the limited, rare, or specific circumstances, or they experience it, but not enough to want to act on it. This is what the textbook definition is of a great asexual, great sexual, great A. I, however, do add grey A onto my heteromantic title because I have grey areas of kissing. But I am not a textbook grey A because I do not experience any sexual attraction whatsoever. I think grey A should be separated from grey sexual and grey sexual in its own right. I mean grey areas. You know, like I have sexual behaviour the way I like to kiss, but I have zero sexual attraction. And again, that's a myth. People think if you have sexual behaviour, you cannot possibly be asexual. But this isn't actually true because behaviour isn't the same as action. Asexuality is a lack of sexual attraction. It's not a lack of action. Um, if some people, you know, have dresses that show their boobs, for example, it doesn't mean to say that they're not asexual if they say they are. You know, um, it just means that they like being like that. I personally usually cover up more the majority of the time uh, because I just feel uncomfortable with wearing low cut tops and stuff that show my boobs off, to be quite frank. And guys get enough of that just by me wearing a T-shirt without actually showing any flesh because like, I've had guys that um, I'm quite big chested. I've had guys that nearly fall off their bicycles 
or uh, gets distracted from their driving just when I'm wearing a tight fitting t shirt. I'm like thinking, thank God I own, you know, I have a whole t shirt on. <laughs> Think what it'd be like if I didn't. Uh, but yeah, that's quite, well, I'd say it's quite amusing, but it's quite peeing off at the same time sometimes. It's like, you know, I do have a brain. <laughs> like, I do have brains. I'm really super intelligent. You don't need to look at my boobs. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, uh, that kind of annoys me, but I kind of think it's funny at the same time. I, I literally have had guys nearly like literally not looking at the road because they've been too busy looking at my chest. And I'm like, oh my God. And they're very noticeable because they're like this. And I'm watching their vehicle or their bicycle and they're just not looking where they're going. And I'm thinking, this is really dangerous. Never mind. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, um, and, you know, like what's really annoying I, I, when you don't like sex and you like, I got someone on Facebook dating, like I said, I didn't like sex. I made it clear because they liked me and I'm like, oh, I really don't like sex. So I don't think we're going to be suitable. And then this guy, and then he started talking about asexual, right? Going, oh, so what makes you asexual? Again, this is another myth. No thing or no one makes someone asexual. It's a genuine sexual orientation. It's not the same as being afraid of sex. It's not the same as having sexual abuse and stopping having sex because of that abuse. It's a genuine sexual orientation. There's a lack of sexual attraction. Um, of course, there's going to be a few minority in the asexual community that just might have lost all sexual attraction whatsoever if they did have a bad experience. Um, you know, and they might have gone, you know, they might just be for years that they don't experience any sexual attraction anymore. And that's how they come to claim they're asexual. Um, but you know, it isn't the same as having sexual abuse and not wanting sex because of that, or, you know, being afraid to have sex. Some heterosexuals, for example, are penetration repulsed. They're not asexual, but they're repulsed by the act of penetration. So they like sex in other ways, for example. Um, but they still get the urge and need and want for partnered sexual intercourse. They just don't like the act itself. So a lot of the time they can't go through with it, you know. So they want to have other ways to have sex, basically. Um, and so, yeah, there's a myth as well that asexuals don't want to be having any sexual acts whatsoever don't want to be involved in it. And that is true for a lot of asexuals, but it's not true for every asexual. Some asexuals really enjoy touching. They really like exploring each other's bodies. Um, they, they, you know, they will have sex, some of them, and some of them won't. But I want to make it clear, there are a lot of asexuals that are, in fact, sex repulsed. Um, you know, because I think it's important to honour a lot of those asexuals that are very sex repulsed, it's important if heterosexuals are watching this, for example, that they understand the majority of asexuals do not want, like, or need sex. And the reason for this is because they don't get the need, urge, or want for it. And when you don't get the need, urge, or want for something, it's not like you're actually after that or wanting it or needing it. You know, there's no desire there. If there's no desire there, it's kind of like watching paint dry. It's not very exciting. You know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, but, you know, there's a myth as well that you, if you don't experience any sexual attraction, you could not ever enjoy sex. And that is true for some asexuals, quite a lot of asexuals, but not true for every asexual, because you don't have to be sexually attracted to someone to enjoy the physical aspects of sex. As for every asexual, some asexuals can still enjoy the physiological side of it. However, the majority of asexuals would usually not be interested or enjoy sex because they don't experience sexual attraction. The only ways some asexuals might enjoy sex is just because they do want to please their partner. It's because they are uh, a part, you know, they want that one of their kind of like ways they show love towards their person is acts of service, for example. Their love language might be acts of service, giving acts of service and receiving acts of service. And that, like, having sex or doing sexual acts might actually come under that. Um, so we have to be respectful of the fact there are different types of asexuals. Um, and then, you know, like, a myth is like, oh, you want to be like a nun. I've actually had guys say this to me. <laughs> like, because I don't want sex, I'm trying to be like a nun. It's like, I'm not trying to be like a nun Right, no disrespect to nuns, they do a great job and being themselves and you know being in their in their godly power, as it were, or Jesus' power if you believe in Jesus. But 
Um, I'm not trying to be like a nun. I have no, no way or incentive or feeling that I want to be a nun, right? I really love kissing. Um, a lot of kissing, especially in public, um, as well as private. So, you know, I'm definitely not trying to be like a nun. Um, but yeah, that's one of the most weirdest things. That was actually by a foreign guy in the UK that said that to me in person. And he's like, oh, so you're, trying, so you're being like a nun or something. You're trying to be like a nun. Or you want to be like a nun. And I'm like, no, I really don't. You're not getting it. Like, So asexuality isn't some religion. It's not some cult. It's not some disease. So some people think it's a disease or it's an illness. Um, a lot of people, you know, like, well, I say a lot. The people who are non-believers of asexuality... They kind of think it's a medical condition. It's not a medical condition. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's not a medical condition. Like, um, and also there's this myth that you can't experience any arousal whatsoever if you're asexual. Some asexuals cannot experience any arousal whatsoever. That is perfectly true. I know asexuals like that. They don't get aroused at all. Arousal isn't in their vocabulary. But for some asexuals, including myself, we can get aroused. Right? So the the theory that, oh, there's something like wrong with your genitalia while you're not actually wanting sex is completely incorrect and false. There is nothing wrong with my genitalia. Um, there is nothing wrong with my arousal feelings. I get highly aroused at times. I'm just not interested in sex because my arousal doesn't lead me to want sex. It leads me to want to kiss sometimes because <laughs> my arousal is linked to kissing usually. It's not linked to sex. I couldn't care less if the guy's like, you know, whatever he's below the waist. I'm not interested in that. I'm attracted to guys' face the most, not below the waist. That's like one of my taglines. <laughs> I'm attracted to his face, not below the waist. Um, you know, and so it's just ridiculous when people keep thinking about all this stuff because they can't accept how such right is. And a lot of the time it's because it makes people uncomfortable. Right. So they will try and attack asexuals for being the way we are. And and, you know, because they are uncomfortable in themselves, it makes them uncomfortable. They don't want us to label ourselves as asexuals. There's quite a few people um, outside the asexual community that don't like labels because it makes them uncomfortable with our, you know, when we call ourselves what we do in our own label. I think if people don't like labels, that's fine for themselves. But if you like a label for yourself, then people should be respecting you and using that label for yourself. If they don't want to label themselves, that's up to them. But out of a sign of respect for you, they should be, you know, acknowledging your label and speaking your label. I like labeling myself. I, my full label of myself is a heteromantic, hyper romantic, grey, a asexual, Younger cougar, hyper kisser, who doesn't like sex, but just kissing. That's pretty much my whole title. And I'm an asexual cougar. What does that mean? So it means I like younger guys. I'm attracted to younger guys. I like younger guys, but I'm a younger cougar because I'm still young. <laughs> so I like guys usually in their 20s. Um, I've actually got a video date tomorrow morning with a guy who's, well, today now, I think it is, because we passed over to the next day. In the morning, I've got a video date with a guy from Facebook dating. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. But he's not in his 20s. He's in his early 30s. So that is older for me. But I did adjust my filters in Facebook dating because I'm still aesthetically attracted to a guy. It doesn't matter if he's a little bit older than I would usually go for. Because, you know, the whole point of the age a lot of the time is for aesthetic attraction, particularly with me, because I personally have to have aesthetic attraction to be attracted to a guy. So that is another myth. That some myth, you know, some people think that asexuals just focus on personality alone and some asexuals really do. And some asexuals don't even understand why looks is important when sex is not involved, for example. But, you know, I have to have aesthetic attraction to be able to kiss a guy. I personally adore kissing so much like a favourite hobby. I know it's not normal, um, but I do. Um, and so I have to be able, able to think I want to kiss the guy. I have to look at him and think, gosh, you're so kissable. I want to kiss you now. That's kind of how I would have to feel and think if I was to get into a relationship with a guy, you know, because it's very, very important that I I have someone I'm aesthetically attracted to because for me personally, I can kiss someone I'm not aesthetically attracted to. I can, however, become more attracted to a guy 
over time, if I'm not aesthetically attracted to him in the beginning, over a long period of time when I've built up an emotional connection with him, then I'm able to do that a lot more easily. Um, but it takes me a long time usually to do that. So I'm kind of like a bit demi in the in the looks way. But the majority of the time, you know, it's it's better for me if I just have a guy who I am automatically aesthetically attracted to on some level in the first place. Um, so yeah, so you know, that is a myth that we just like someone's personality and looks is not important. Another myth is that we don't experience any attraction whatsoever. Nothing, diddly squat. This is a big, big, huge myth, right? There are some aromantic asexual so that lack like romantic attraction and sexual attraction that really don't have any attractions going on. Um, there's quite a, a number, particularly of romantic asexuals, that do have some attractions. And these attractions could be aesthetic or romantic or emotional or sensual. Uh, they could be, you know, like spiritual attraction, creative attraction. I've got a video that explains eight different types of asexual attractions uh, that I personally experience myself. And so, you know, we can have attractions. We can have high attractions. They're just not the same as the majority of the world. They're not the same as the heterosexual attractions in terms of, you know, we don't get sexually attracted in the main. Um, so it's very different. Um, also, um, all asexuals want a platonic relationship. This is very interesting, this one. So personally for me, I don't experience any platonic attraction whatsoever. So when someone's like putting even their asexual dating profile, they want a platonic relationship. I don't look for a platonic relationship because I'm not, I'm not platonic attracted to anyone, you know. And so for me, I look for a romantic uh, relationship because I'm romantically attracted. That's my main driving, aesthetic and romantic attraction. Um, on my first probably two driving forces, and then I have to have intellectual. Um, you know, I get intelligence attraction, so I have to have um high intellect usually on a guy because unless a guy can hold a decent conversation with me, eventually down the line I'm just going to get bored in the relationship because it's going to be you know not be able to talk to me about things and it's just going to be like leading nowhere. Um, intelligence to me can be talking about, um, you know, computers, website design. Um, I experience creative attraction. So if their creative projects, for example, have an intelligent aspect to them, which usually they do, that would satisfy to some extent my um, in intelligence attraction. I think for me, um, I like a guy who's worldly, a guy who can talk about the world, planet and universe. He doesn't hold anything back. You know, he's not afraid of speaking his mind and saying anything and everything. Um, that type of thing. So yeah, um, asexuals are all virgins, which I've explained earlier is simply not true. It's a huge myth. Um, some asexuals have had sex before. If you've had sex before, then you can't be asexual. It's simply another myth that isn't true. I discovered I'm asexual in 2014. The last time I had sex was in 2011. Oh, we're now in 2022 and I am so happy, so happy, over the moon, overjoyed that I haven't had sex for over 10 years. I cannot tell you how good that feels because I don't need it. I don't like it. I don't want it ever again. And I'm just happier living sex free. I do not want to get pregnant either. And I can still have children, in case you were wondering, because I said I'm an asexual cougar, so I'm an older girl who likes younger guys. But I specifically put that in my title quite a bit, sometimes on asexual dating sites, for example, because I do not want to be approached by older guys. Like, just like... Ugh. I personally don't get attracted to older guys. Obviously, I need a guy who's attracted to older women because, you know, I, um, I'm an older girl, right? But I don't really behave like an older girl. <laughs> I'm not at home putting my slippers on and watching TV. Oh, dear me, you know. Um, I'm not, like, sat down just twiddling my thumbs and waiting till my hair goes grey or something. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm really lively, energetic, bubbly girl who's got the mindset of a 21-year-old purposely and lives like a teenager and loves it, as you probably see from all the cuddly toys and interesting things in the back of my live stream. 
Um, yeah, so asexuals are prudes. Um, it's another myth that's absolutely ridiculous. Asexuals can't get laid, as in asexuals can't find anyone to have sex with them. That is a complete and utter myth. A lot of asexuals get really hit on loads. A lot of asexuals are approached full sex a lot of times. I am constantly getting guys approaching me for sex since I've been in this Indian dating group on Facebook dating back on Facebook dating again now since last weekend but I went in this Indian dating group oh my god they're just pretty much nearly all after sex like vultures it's quite bad really for me personally because I'm a sex repulsed asexual um you know and so you know I I get offered sex all the time I've been offered it in clubs multiple times in my city if I wanted to have sex, you know, you could argue, well, I could have loads of guys for sex, all different types. I could have a different guy for every day of the week, every night of the week, probably as well. Um, but I'm really not like that. And I don't want that. So please don't inbox me about that. Um, you know, because I'm not interested. <laughs> really, I'm not. Um, but yes, it would be a very interesting uh, if there was a version of me that wasn't interested in sex, because I'm like, well, you've got a lot of choices, girl, there. But yes, sadly, for asexuals who are sex repulsed we have far less choices in terms of a healthy happy relationship because unfortunately if we're sex repulsed and we don't like sex and the majority of the world and guys in it do then it kind of makes it really difficult for us if you're after a guy that is um or whatever gender you have to just replace the genders out you know it makes it really difficult for us because we're there wanting a sex-free relationship and there's so many people trying to get sex out of us and it really, you know, it's just repulsive to me, you know, and it's like, I, I'm not interested in a guy's dick, you know, it's just, it doesn't, uh, 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 you know, it doesn't appeal to me. It really doesn't. I don't understand why women go for that. Why, why women are interested in that. Why? What is appealing about it? Really? Seriously? I don't get it. I really don't understand it. It's like, it's like a, 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 a sausage that's just not tasty and, with wizened potatoes around it. It's just gross. I was like, <laughs> oh dear. And after that image, yes. Ugh. I think I've just made myself feel sick. Or really repulsed in the least. Oh. Um, you know, and so yeah. Oh, you can't have a healthy relationship unless you're having sex is a huge myth. I get absolutely fed up with this one. So this is a myth that lots of traditional dating coaches propagate. I'm an asexual dating coach. Um, but a lot of traditional dating coaches, you know, the ones that promote sex and sex and relationships, you know, I've heard a number of them say stuff like, if you're not having sex, your relationship is dead in the water, right? And they really do base a healthy relationship on whether you're having sex or not, how often you're having it how much you're having it. And if you're having it very often, there's something severely wrong in your relationship. This is absolute load of bullshit. I have to spell it out. It is just so bad. And this is why the world is in the state it is in terms of broken relationships. Divorce rates are at all time high, most likely, from what I can tell from a recent post someone posted. And, you know, and it's just why people feel unsatisfied in relationships because they are fed this lie that you have to be having all this sex you know and the people who watch porn they've got a, i don't watch porn but they've got a completely like i have it shoved in my face sometimes on social media but you know they have it um you know they just they, you know these people are actors and actresses they're not real they're just faking it to get your money you know <laughs> don't you even realize that you know what i mean okay there's some couples that have sex there are apparently some real couples who have real sex specifically for porn videos so they get paid to do what they enjoy together but of camera filming them right so there are people like that but it's like they're doing it to get money right they don't care about you and they are obviously still going to put on an act to some extent for the camera because some cameraman is going to want certain angles and for them to do certain stuff which is not actually what they naturally do some of it you know what i mean um but it's just like the world needs to kind of shake its patterns up of of behavior and thinking you know and we have to understand that somewhere along the line of evolution these people made up these rules and these patterns of behavior that were based on having sex and sexual attraction this is conditioning this is what the world has been conditioning people for for years and i'm here to say that this conditioning is not good 
right? We should be having the freedom to choose the type of relationships we want and the freedom to know that it's okay if some people don't experience sexual attraction, don't want it, sex, don't like it, don't need it, don't get the urge for it. It's natural for some people to be this way. And, and the world seriously needs shaking up like this. We need a lot of people to speak up. You know, because the more people understand there are thousands of asexuals around the globe, thousands of us, many, not all, but a, a large proportion of which do not want sex, do not get the urge for it, do not get the need for it. And it's perfectly fine. You know, we don't have to be some, uh, we don't have to be a religious person to feel the way we do, to be the way we are. We don't have to be a nun, which many of us I don't even aren't. I don't even know one of us that is, um, you know. And it's just like you know, we can be free to be who we are. We can speak our own mind, you know. Like in society, we're conditioned a lot by things, right? We're constantly being conditioned by advertising, by people we speak to, by friends, by family, by teachers, by everyone around us. We're being influenced, if you like, and. We have the decision and the power of choice in our life, the power of decision and the power of choice, right? And we need to lose our logical minds. You know, our logical mind should be saying, hey, not everyone likes everything, right? Logically, not everyone likes everything in life. There are logically going to be some people who do not like sex, right? And you have to break your patterns of conditioned thinking to understand there are different people in the world. There are people that are different to you. And they're just as valid as you are. You know, asexuals are just as valid as heterosexuals, as pansexuals, as bisexuals, as homosexuals. And I think, you know, love should be embraced no matter what size, shape, colour, creed, religion, race you are. I'm in favour of age gap loves as well. You know, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube with age gap loves, uh, you know, relationships. And I really like them because I'm not into old guys. It makes me more cringy when I see older guys with younger women, to be honest, because I'm not interested in older guys. But I've I've got over a lot of the cringiness now because obviously I like younger guys. So I, you know, it's role reverse. But I always feel personally it's more natural for an older woman and a younger guy to be together than it is for a younger girl and an older guy to be together because of the way I personally feel. Um uh, but I I you know I do appreciate the other side where the older guy likes a younger girl because obviously I'm an older girl who likes a younger guy. Um, but, you know, to me, it's a lot more natural with an, a younger guy with an older woman. It, it just seems really natural for, for that to be the case in a lot of relationships, because that's the way I personally feel. And I really relate to that strongly. You know, um, I know there's some guys in the world that just can't be with a girl their own age. There's some young guys that are only into older women and to be with, a, you know, they just think of the girls their own age as friends and nothing more they just couldn't be attracted to them because it's not their thing you know and you know and that's very important because we've all got our own thing that we like and we don't like you know and that we enjoy or don't enjoy we're all different you know and the world needs to embrace more differences and it needs to stop this thinking that if you're not having sex that you're not having a relationship it's completely ridiculous sex is one thing that some people can choose to do in a relationship or not choose to do. It's not something that should have to be the case because people are valuing the relationships on how much love they are getting or not getting, but they're also valuing the love by the amount of sex they're getting or not getting because they equate sex to love. It's not, you know, and just think of all the times you don't have sex with your partner. Do you feel unloved if you're in a sexual relationship? Do you feel unloved if you're not having sex? And if so, why is that? Ask yourself, why is that? Why is it you need genitalia to feel loved? Because there should be other parts to the relationship that's making you feel equally loved and special, if not more so. You know, like the amount of tender touching, the amount of hair stroking, the amount of like being there in messaging for each other when you've had a crap day, to be honest, excuse the language, 
You know, when you when you like sharing your most intimate thoughts and feelings and secrets with each other, when you're sharing some really troubling things that are on your mind, these are intimacy things. These are things that bond you emotionally to a person on a deep foundational level. You know, if you've got a poem, you know, and you write a poem to someone, you know, the words that you create of a poem can be so much more deep and loving than having sex because they are so special to that person, to the person you're talking about, to even just a poem you've written yourself about how you're feeling is true intimacy, right? We need to, to redefine intimacy as it actually is, you know, and it's more important to have intimacy in a relationship than it is sex because intimacy gives you a much more deeper soulmate connection. It gives you much more expansion of being able to discuss a variety of things and being able to feel that person heart to heart with no blockages there. You can just feel them as though you're one with them. You know, this is like true soulmate love. Right? A soulmate love is when you're connected through the years and times and ages. You're just connected to that person in some way even if you don't want to be sometimes if they're no good for you, right? Um, but, you know, like, hopefully you get a good soulmate. The good, beautiful soulmate, your real soulmate, your true soulmate, the one who loves you and adores you for who you are and who um, appreciates you and who wants to shout to the world, hey, I'm with you because you're gorgeous. Um, you know, and so we need to be redefining love and redefining intimacy as a whole society because... I want people to understand that the broken relationships, the broken marriages, the divorces, a lot of them are because the people are not satisfied with who they are in their relationship. A lot of which they probably got together based on sexual attraction, based on that initial chemistry. And when that wears off, th could be three months down the line, could be six months, could be 18 months. Even in heterosexual dating um conversations like with heterosexual dating coaches as opposed to me or some asexual dating coach um you know i hear them saying like within 18 after 18 months kind of like the sexual magic wears off the chemistry wears off so unless you've got some like some things in common with that person uh shared goals ambitions and dreams together unless you've got something to work on to work on the relationship together you're going to start falling apart so although the sexual coaches promote sex as in you've got to have sex to have a healthy relationship which i said is completely not true um then you know it's not true as a blanket statement obviously some people who really need want like sex obviously it's important for them and they wouldn't probably be happy in a relationship without it if they're really driven to have sex right same with an asexual who's driven not to have sex but you know even the dating coaches that are heterosexual and they're saying, you know, like after 18 months, that sexual chemistry just wears off. And and even this initial spark wears off. And then you've got to, although me being hyper romantic probably wouldn't be feeling that as much. Um, but, you know, it, it, after the initial spark wears off, if you've got nothing in common and you've got no shared goals, ambitions, and dreams, and you can't even talk to the person because you've just had a sexual relationship, for example, in the beginning, and and all the you know the sex does usually slow down at some point with many people. Then um, on average, it's probably about three times a week. The average person guy guy I know about guys that want sex, you know, but um, some of them do want it a lot more than that. But you know, after time, you know, it fades usually. Some of the magic and chemistry starts fading, right? So you've got to have something else to base the relationship on. And if all you've done is based it on sex and and sexual attraction, you know, that's when you end up in a relationship where you're dissatisfied and unhappy and unfulfilled. And that's when some people look outside the relationship again to get that buzz and excitement. And the cycle goes on and on and on. Instead of them stopping thinking, okay, I expect in 18 months that it's not going to be as exciting in terms of chemistry, in terms of sexual attraction, if they're sexually attracted, in terms of all, all the initial fireworks stuff. I accept that. And I'm already knowing that down the line, I'm going to be, you know, wanting this for the for the relationship. I'm going to be wanting this goal together with the person. I'm going to be, you know, working with them on this, you know. Um, and so this is so important, you know. Um, and so, you know, with, with 
asexuals, again, some people think we're on another planet. I would kind of like not completely disagree because I think we are on another planet. It's called the planet Ace and I love it and it's great. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Some people think we've got mental illness and some asexuals do have mental illness, but asexuality itself is not a mental illness, right? There's nothing wrong with being asexual. I find it most amazing wonderful thing ever to be asexual i do rave about it a lot because i'm proud of it i'm damn proud that i am not like the majority of the population i'm damn proud that i don't have sex anymore just imagine if you're a sex repulsed asexual and you felt like you've had to have sex in previous relationships and you found felt that if you didn't have sex you know you wouldn't be able to have a relationship you know that's how i kind of felt in the past and to be able to not have that pressure anymore, to be able to know that I don't have to do that anymore. And if a guy doesn't accept me for who I am, then it's bye bye, isn't it? You know? Um, and so, you know, it just is such a huge sense of relief, you know, a huge sense of relief. Um, so, you know, and another myth that asexuals are not attractive, it's like got nothing to do with us not being attractive. Most asexuals, in my opinion, from what I've seen, are very attractive. You know, and like I said, we do get a lot of people in our inboxes after us, you know. Oh, and some people think we're playing games. That's another myth. Some people think that because we call our, call ourselves asexual, that we're not really asexual. We're just playing games and relationship. And it's like a cat and mouse. And we're trying to avoid having sex because we just want to save ourselves for a, for a, a special time when we have sex with a special someone, right? That's what some heterosexuals do or some sexuals do. They decide they don't want to have sex straight away, which is good for them. And they want to save it for more special times for when they get to know the person better. But with an asexual, for example, who's sex repulsed, who doesn't want sex at all, it's not a temporary thing. And, you know, it's a myth that it's a temporary thing. It's a permanent thing that I'm not ever going to want sex. If I do change my mind and did want sex, it wouldn't change my sexuality. It wouldn't make me start getting the need, urge or want for sex. I still wouldn't have that in me because asexuality is a sexual orientation. It's not something you could turn on and on and on and off like a tap. Another myth about asexuality is that it's a lifestyle choice. It is not a lifestyle choice. I didn't choose to be asexual. You can't um try it on either. So I've got some people who come in my inbox going, oh, I want to try being asexual. Can you tell me how to be asexual? It's not something you can try on. It's not like a coat where you say, hey, let me just put my coat on. I'm going to go outside now with this beautiful coat on and I'm going to try it on for size. It's not like that. A, you know, asexuality is not something you can try on for size. It's not a lifestyle choice. Um, you know, it's not it's not abstaining. It's not a mental illness. It's not, a, you know, I get tired of saying this. You can see it in my face. It's like, oh, my God. And the list goes on and on. Right. Asexuality is a perfectly natural thing. Um, it's based on the lack of sexual attraction. Pure asexuals don't experience any sexual attraction whatsoever. We don't get the need urge you want for partner sexual intercourse. A lot of the time, intercourse doesn't doesn't appeal to us because there's nothing in it for us. Because it's 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 just boring if you don't experience sexual attraction a lot of the time. For a lot of us, not all. Some asexuals physiolo physiologically uh, don't mind it. May enjoy the physical sides of it, the sensations and stuff. But for a lot of us, we're just not interested, right? We just rather do other things, right, with our time, you know. And so, you know, is you know, it's not because we can't get laid because many of us are offered sex. It's not because we're not attractive because many asexuals are attractive. It's not because we're a prude because you know we're just being ourselves right and there's nothing wrong with being yourself right in this world it's good that ev not everyone's the same it's good that everyone's different right i can be in a relationship with a guy who's different to other people because i don't care what people think right so many people worry about what people think all the time why are you wasting your life worried about what other people think what does it matter what they think i don't care if someone doesn't like my asexuality be on your way in it bye bye <laughs> Au revoir. Go away. <laughs> it's fine if you don't like my asexuality. I'm not going to change my sexual orientation for you because, hey, it's a genuine sexual orientation, which means I can't change it because it's not like, you know, I'm putting on another coat or I'm putting on another layer of clothing. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's not something I can change, uh, you know, and I have to explain to them it's a genuine sexual orientation. 
you know, just like heterosexuality is a sexual orientation, asexuality is a sexual orientation. Just like homosexuality is a sexual orientation, asexuality is a sexual orientation. Just like bisexuality is a sexuality, a sexual orientation, so is asexuality a sexual orientation, a sexuality. <sighs> and also pansexuality. You know, pansexuality is a sexuality, asexuality is a sexuality. Um, you know, some of the other kind of things we get told is like, oh, you know, like, you're stopping the human species by not having kids. Um, and there's this myth that no asexuals want kids. There are some asexuals that do want kids. There are some asexuals that have kids. There are some asexuals that will only have sex to have kids and that's it and they don't do it ever again. But yes, there are a large proportion of asexuals that do not want kids. Right? We are not robots. We are not baby making machines. There are plenty of people in the world that enjoy making babies and having babies. Right? We do not all need to have babies. We do not need our bodies to be used as machines to create babies. Right? It's ridiculous that you think that everyone should be like that because we shouldn't. People have a choice what they do with their own bodies. I personally have no one kids since I was 15 years old, and that's never ever going to change. And I can't wait for the time when I can no longer physically have kids anymore. But I, at the moment, I can physically have kids if I wanted to. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. But I'm not having sex. So it's good because then I won't have a kid. Because I do not want kids or behavior. I'm pregnancy repulsed personally for me. I just like really, really not into pregnancy. It makes me feel sick personally for me. Does that mean to say that people are pregnant? There's something wrong. No, if people want to be pregnant and like having babies, that's perfectly fine with them, for them, great. And, you know, if I've got friends who like babies and they say, oh, I'm expecting a baby, I'll say, congratulations to you. That's great for you because it's great for them because it makes them happy. But I am not interested and I personally makes me want to throw up because I just detest pregnancy. It's just not natural to me. It's one of the most well, probably one of the very top most unnatural things I believe personally, you know, and yes, I was a baby once. Um, so yes, you know, that's what I personally feel. So, you know, the fact that even people say it's a general blanket statement that pregnancy is natural, I mean, babies is natural. That's not actually the way every single person in the world feels. And I know there are some other asexuals like me who are not interested in getting pregnant and don't feel it's natural. Even in this asexual perspectives book, there's someone who says there's nothing natural about a baby being pushed down the birth canal and, you know, like expanding your bits, basically, to push it out. There's nothing natural or elegant about that. There's nothing good about that in that way, you know? Um, so, yeah, we don't all need to have babies to carry on the species. And, you know, some people want to leave a lasting legacy in and of their own right. That's what I want to do. I'm here to leave my legacy as Sandra Bellamy as an individual in this world, you know, that's what's important to me. I don't know your baby to carry on my bloodline because my own legacy will be helping other people for years to come. My books, for example, um, I'm very proud of my books, you know, they're in British Library and other libraries in the UK and they will go down as a piece of history forever. So long as the pages are there, they will go down in history and help generations to come. And obviously my Asexual Guide to Sex book when it's out will be you know, truly life-changing for many people, including those in the future. And that's why the work I do for asexuals is very important to me, you know, because it's not just making a change on a small scale. I want to make a change on a big scale. I want people to know it's okay to be asexual. I want people to know that asexuality is normal for some people. It's, it's amazing for some people. It's a gift, if you like, to be able to not need sex, to love someone, to be able to have a loving, caring, healthy, happy relationship based on friendship. Because that is really what a healthy relationship is. It's based on friendship, not on sex. So the fact that people use, like, say stuff like, oh, you just want a friendship as an insult, basically, to asexuals is disgusting. It's, it's, it's really quite insulting saying that in general. Because, you know, if you think for one minute you can have a healthy relationship without being really good friends with the person you're in a relationship with, you're, you need your head examined. <laughs> really you do because healthy relationships are based on teamwork are based on friendship you know they're not based on sex and how much sex you can have and get it's not how you make a healthy relationship 
And yes, if you're heterosexual and love sex, then obviously sex will want to be featured in your relationship. And, you know, you'll want to find a compatible person with you for that. I understand that. It's very important. But unless you are really good friends or best friends with the person you're in a relationship with, it doesn't matter whether you have sex or not, it's not going to be healthy unless you work together as a team in a friend companion way to grow and build something special with a person you know it really isn't so you have to understand that friendship should be the foundation of everything and asexual should not be mocked like oh you just want a friend uh, like they don't take a relationship seriously unless it hasn't unless it's got sex in it and if it hasn't got sex it's not taken seriously it should be taken just as seriously as a relationship that has sex in it because it is you know, it's serious if someone's in a relationship, you know, it's equally valid, equally valid and equally as important, right, and never ever forget that, anyway, I hope you found this video useful, helpful, insight, if you have, please give it a thumbs up, love to know what you think in the comments below, uh, don't forget to share this video if you think someone else will benefit from it, and um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that great big bell icon so you get notified of every time I go live like now, post a new video. Thanks to all the people that are here live. Lots of love to you. Take care. And I'll see you soon on the next video live stream. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day.